Hello, in this video we're going to look at driving the maximum likelihood estimates for a beta binomial distribution. And this is the probability mass function for a beta binomial distribution. Now I have a video out called the mean and the variance of a beta binomial distribution where we derive this distribution and we calculate the mean and the variance for it. But here we're just going to derive the maximum likelihood estimates. So we need a joint likelihood so this is a vector so it's all the data and there's n observations capital N um, because little n is indexed for the binomial distribution and so it has these constants out front raised to the n and it's the product of these uh, three terms here you know one to n our sample size now what we do is we take the log likelihood so you know maximizing this distribution is going to be equivalent to maximizing the log likelihood and it's often much easier and so if we take the log of this product and it's the sum of the log so we and then the log of this division it all breaks down into this basically so the n will come out front and we have the log of this term and then minus this term minus that term minus this term and then it's plus because that's a product and then the log of this and the uh, log of a product the sum of the log so it's the log of all this but then this is itself a product so we can rewrite then we can write that as a sum so we have this coming down and this here is going to be the sum of this term, this term, and this term, and that's what these represent. And I took the time to write it out like this when we, because when we take partial derivatives, then I think it's easier to see what's going on. So here, now to maximize this log likelihood, we take partials with respect to alpha and partials with respect to beta, and then solve two equations, two unknowns. So here, the partial with respect to alpha so we go through here so the partial of the log of gamma is actually what's called a digamma so we just put in digamma of alpha and beta and since we're taking it with respect to alpha we get digamma of alpha this is constant and then we get the digamma of alpha plus beta plus n now down here there's no alpha so it's constant no alphas here so it's constant here then we just get the sum of this digamma of alpha plus xi now to take the partials with respect to beta of this it's actually the same thing the n and then we get digamma of alpha plus beta that's constant digamma of beta and then digamma of this term and no beta here, it drops out, drops out, and then we just get the sum of the digammas of beta plus n minus xi. Now, these, like if there, are, you can solve these numerically for sp certain specific values of alpha and beta, but in general, you can't solve, there's no closed form uh, solution. So you have to use numerical methods. And I have a video called newton Rapson and Gauss-Newton Methods. I think it's a two-part video. One where I try to give the intuitive feel for what's going on, and then the second one is more mathematical and describes exactly what's going on. So we're going to continue to this side. But notice, this is the equation that we want to you know, set to zero, and this is the equation that we want to set to zero. So we have to take partials with respect to those variables. So we have to take the partial of x with respect to the partial of x or alpha of the log of likelihood. So it's really the second partial. And then you get what's it breaks down the, the derivative of a digamma is what's called a trigamma. And these are all functions in R. I'm going to uh, show how to do this numerically in R in the next video. But you end up with trigamma functions, which is the derivative of a digamma, in the same way here. And then when we take the partial, this, you know, with respect to beta, of the partial with respect to beta of the log likelihood, 
then it's really just saying it's the second partial. So then you get you get the same thing. All these terms have betas. They were digammas. Now since we're taking the partial again, they become trigammas. And I'd encourage you to look that up if you haven't had much experience working with those. And then it's the sum of this trigamma. Now here to we need what's called the Jacobian of this transformation. Um, so then here's the partial of you know, with, of log likelihood with respect to alpha and then beta. So we just get the n, the trigamma of alpha beta, trigamma of alpha beta plus n. So then we, we create this Jacobian with the, the terms that we just created. They're calculated. So here, actually I wrote it the same way, but it should be one of them should be the other way the partial of beta with and then the partial of alpha but they're the same thing and so I just wrote them here now to iterate to find this maximum likelihood it's an iterative process we have to have an initial guess and remember we're trying to estimate two points alpha and a beta so we need an estimate for both both of those and what I like to do is plug in the method of moments estimate because it's so fast and easy and then I iterate from that point on. So this is the our initial guess. It's the J inverse of the Jacobian with our initial guess plugged in times the partial of F, partial of the log likelihood. Um, so then, you know, plug with our point plugged in. So we calculate this and we get a new point. And then we pretend like that's our point and then we plug it back in and then we get a new point and we iterate until there's convergence and that's it and that's the maximum likelihood estimate and we're going to next video we're going to use r to calculate the method of moments and the maximum likelihood estimators for a beta binomial distribution so i hope you enjoyed this i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye